over Sodom and Gomorrah, the sins that were being commissioned there, when that level of outcry was so high, God Almighty was compelled to come down himself. As in, I can't believe this, I'm going there. And you see what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. The burning sulfur. Could it be true that the level of outcry reaching the Lord about the church could have been so high that he said, let me go down there myself. Be careful now with the Lord. The Lord is not something you can put in your paradigm, in your model, in your system, or in your book. And pocket him and say, this is the only way I want to know this visitation. No. No, 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 no. Be careful with the Lord. Oh, yes, come, let us celebrate. Be careful with the Lord before you start celebrating. Could it be true that the level of outcry, look at this now. Outcry from who? In Sodom and Gomorrah. You'll find that when you follow that very carefully, oh, the outcry is so great and the sin so grievous. You'll find that the few that tried to live holy there were crying out to God. Lord, save us. Lord, help us here. Lord, look at what they've done to us. And it was so bad that the two angels, too, when they went down, they wanted to defile them. They wanted, the, the homosexuals wanted to defile them. You remember the story? Yes, until the Lord had to say, these are my daughters, they're virgins. Take them and defile them. They have not known any man, but leave the guests of God. Ah, that was bad. That was bad. So it tells you that if there was one or two people that chose to live holy there, they were the ones busy crying out to God, please deliver us. This is so bad on a daily basis. Could it be that there are some widows in the church? Could it be that there is a woman in the church in Zambia here that has been crying out to the Lord, Lord, send your prophet here. Lord, send your voice here to rebuke this thing. Could it be? Could it be that there was a woman that was crying here? Lord, when will you send, when will you come and rebuke this thing here? Lord, look at what they have done to us. The woman is coming to the pastor. I say, Pastor, uh, the way the worship team are behaving, I came on Saturday during the practice and I realized that this is not right. Mm, because I think there's immorality between them. I'm mature. I'm not young. When I see, I just know. And the pastor, ah, don't worry. I've, I've checked them. I don't uh, see. And then she sees another woman serving in church, dressing badly, leadership, and sitting in front. After the service, she wants to meet the pastor. And the pastor can almost tell what she wants to talk about. She wants to complain. Pastor, that woman, she's not dressed well and she's sitting in front. It is not proper for the house of the Lord. Hey! And the pastor says, before she comes, the, the, the usher say, Pastor, uh, so and so and so, who is this? She's the one. I, I tell her I'm busy. That woman, she wants to run the church. <laughs> she, 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 she wants to... She wa hey! But she has a God who created ears who hears. Her God who created the ears can also hear. Hey, hey. Oh yes. Oh yes. And she's being told, a ah, pastor says he's very busy. Are you, can you wait until Monday? Can I wait for him here? I'm not in a hurry on Sunday after service. I'm free. The, no, the pastor says he can meet you, really. And then she goes home crying like this. She says, I don't like what I'm seeing in the house of the Lord. Could it be that there is a woman in Zambia that has been watching them all practice the dysfunction the abuse, the 
defilement, the immorality. And she's crying out to God, she don't sleep much at night. Lord, when will you send your prophet to rebuke this? Lord, when will you come and save me from this? Lord, when will you remember your house? Oh, I remember the old days when church was church. We used to wear long dresses. We worshipped the Lord. The Bible, the Bible was at the center of the teaching. There was no comedy. She is crying to God. Could it be true? You, you, know, you know these women are mature. When, when, when they see a woman in something with a pastor, they can tell. Oh, they are very mature. They say, this is a, a pastor. Pastor, why don't you focus on the word? Why don't you preach using the Bible? Hey! She comes and tells the pastor, Pastor, the way this woman is relating with this, it's not good. She starts to call, when, when the pastor rebuke her, she said, really? No, okay. The, the pastor says, really? Is she behaving badly? Hmm. What did she do? Oh, really? Okay, okay. Then does like this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it. Okay, okay. Is there, is there anything else? Whatever. And then she collects two, three other members of church in her house. And they say, let us cry for this pastor. Let us cry for this pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could it be true that the Lord heard the cry? And he said, I heard that there is homosexuality in the church. I heard that pastors are sleeping with ushers, members of church, and the worship. I heard that people are being told to sow a seed to purchase the blood of Jesus. I heard that the false prophets are coming from Nigeria here and they are dispensing abomination. And when their daughters, your daughters go to attend to them in the hotel, I'll come and help the prophet, they sleep with them. I heard that they are selling some clothes. I heard that they are selling bottles of oil. I heard that they are going and fetching water, dirty water. Someone say, this is from River Jordan. Could it be true that the Lord heard? And then he said, the level of outcry for the church, on the church, on the commissioning of sins, is too high and the sin too grievous. Let me go down there myself and investigate it myself. Let me go to Zambia to Lusaka myself on a fact-finding mission myself. On this one, I send nobody. I need to go myself just to prove that it is true. And if I find that it is true, I will know what to do. I will know. I will know. Yes, if I find it's true, I will know. Yes. Hmm? Could it be true? Yes. But they are going with the pastors. Has worshipped him. And then you hear they were in his room the whole night. Could it be true? That he's taking some of them for conferences out to South Africa. Could it be true? Huh? I, I just need to go. I'm in a hurry. I need to get there quickly and find it out. He was telling Abraham, I need to go, please allow me. I need to run. Mm. It's burning. I need to get there. Could it be true that the Lord heard that the skirts of the women are short in the church? Excuse me. Could it be true that he heard it? Oh, they are tying their, 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 their to show their anatomy as they walk among people here. Could it be true that he heard that? That the house of the Lord has become a Sodom and Gomorrah, has become a brothel. Excuse me. 
Which God are you worshipping? If you're worshipping another God from the one that sent me, that's all right. But if you're worshipping Jehovah, the holy God of Israel, my goodness, there is a standard. There is a standard. And between you and God, between you and God, one person has to bow down to the other. You just tell me if it is God who is going to bow down to you. You tell me that today. Between you and him, one is God. And if it is you going to bow down, then please, just sharpen up. Rise up. And he does not care whether you own a Bible college or you have 200 churches. Th that even is not important to him though. Oh yes, by the way, for your own information. Oh, you see, oh, you see, uh, we are the spiritual leaders, the fathers of the nation. Uh -uh, that is total rubbish to him. Oh yes. And he's saying, and he's saying, if you are truly the spiritual fathers of the nation, then you would have led the nation on the path of righteousness. That is the true father of the nation. But this one for eating chicken and what and after church. A woman cooks a meal after church. Could it be true that he heard that widows when they come here? Very vulnerable. And the first thing you ask, how much did he live? Well, I have a property there, I have a house there. And uh, so much in the account. Then you invite someone from Ghana or Nigeria and you give him that secret. And her name probably is Jen. If you're Jenny, I don't feel bad. You're still my daughter. <laughs> or Janet or whatever. Jen, let's say. And then you give it. And then he comes here. Uh, the prophet from Nigeria now. Or Ghana or whatever. And, or Uganda. Come here and say, uh, There's a woman. I see you. <laughs> Let that nonsense end. Your name is ja Janet. Ja ja Jennifer, Janet, Jen, 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 Jen. He says like that. Absolute garbage, right? Not in the house of my father. No. No. And then he says, you have, you, you, I think you are a widow. It looks like you are a widow. And then now uh, you have, uh, it's, uh, is, is it $5,000? It's in commercial, commercial, is it commercial bank? Is, I don't, uh, ah! Ah, and then the woman runs from there, the widow. Say, it is me, God has seen me. Could it be true that the Lord heard that? And say, I just won't go down myself and prove, is this really happening? And if I find that it's happening in Lusaka, I will know what to do. So when the Lord himself comes down, be careful. Oh, yes, be careful. You just be careful. Don't celebrate. Tremble. Revere him. Honor him. Change your ways. Can we move on now? And you see, in the same way, in the book of Numbers, chapter 9, verses 15 to 23. And then there's also the book of Exodus. I'm going to read only one. I think I read Exodus chapter 40, 34 to 38. I think it's around there. Exodus 40, 34, 38. Let me find it. But Numbers chapter 9, verses 15 to 23. And then the shorter version of it is, I think, Exodus 40, 34 to 38. Let me get to it first. Hallelujah. Yeah, it is true. 40 to, to the, the, that, uh, Exodus 40, 34 to 38. Say, the glory of the Lord. This same glory. And he says, are we there? Exodus 40. There is Numbers chapter 9, 15 to 23. Then there is now Exodus 40, verses 34 to 38. Oh, yes. That's why you find some pastors. When I come, they will not be found here. No, they cannot come. No, 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 no. No, no, no you, they will not try. Yeah, because when they come here, they know what to expect. Oh, yes. They know who has come. That, that they know. That they know very well. Yes. And they know what will happen when they come. And that's why you need to be very careful with this thing called apostasy. 
those who are apostate, I have a whole teaching, I think it's nine hours, on apostasy. Apostasy today. Those who are apostate, be careful. If you look at how the Bible looks at them, you, you, in fact, I trembled. You will find that the Lord says, to begin with, they were not part of us. So that shocked me when I heard that. And then, somewhere he also says, they masquerade as angels of light. So again, it's too complicated. They are mixed in here. When Dagon was there, you could see that that is Dagon. I don't want to go there. I go this side. But when now it's mixed, <laughs> you know, when Dagon was there, you could see a big statue raised there. And it still messed them up. They still found themselves kneeling and worshipping there. <laughs> How much more when it's now mixed here that you really have to, it's like light, you have to sort it out. How much more will you fall there? <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a whole teaching on apostasy. And if you find the way the Lord speaks about the apostates, he says, those who renounce of the authority of Christ. Because the authority of Christ is holiness. He says, those who disobey the authority of God. This woman is a posted. She's working on a miniskirt in the church, which means she has openly said, I don't care about Jesus. Oh yes, because you're telling and she's not accepting. Oh yes. So when you look at that definition, if you build it up, and got the Greek meaning, the word apostasia, where really the root word came from, the Greek and then Aramaic, you know. Then you will find that apostasy talks about the atheists in church. People that do not believe in Christ Jesus. So be very careful. If you have a pastor in this city, that every time the message of righteousness comes, he is not found there. <laughs> it is reason to say, you know what? I need to go to heaven. I, I don't have time. Yeah, I really need to prepare myself for heaven. I don't really have time to deal with a human being. Did you understand me well? Because you will enter alone. And you will never stand there and say, Lord, but my pastor did not go when the announcement reached Zambia. And now, you know, he didn't even tell it to us. <laughs> That will not be your defense on that day. I, I, I need to go because it's really, I have so much work. You see, can we read uh, the, the, the Exodus 40, 34? That's why I'm saying, again, I, I just tell you openly. Every time, if every time the word of repentance like this comes, be careful when the Lord sends you somebody that always tells you, please, go back to repentance. Be careful with that one. When, when God sends that one, that one be careful with that, pattern, that particular person. Because never ever has the devil ever sent anybody to tell a church that is in sin like in Lusaka, Zambia here, to go back to repentance and holiness in Christ Jesus. Never ever. That one you do not need to discern. So once you realize your pastor is not there, you can as well do what? Cut it. You say, I don't want to hear that man. The message of holiness came. And he did not go. I don't know this person. In fact, I'm worried that I've been with this person. Oh yes, I have to rethink my course. Because what the Lord is saying is that right now there will be a mature bride. But that, that is the line of reasoning of a mature church. A mature bride. He said, ah, ah, ah. I need to find where I can prepare for heaven. My pastor says he was too busy to go hear what God himself. <laughs> this visitation, the entire of the ministry of Jesus did not come. And has now come. And he did not come. Ah! Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. He called you, oh, you see, where are you? You are not coming to church anymore. Uh, pastor, I'm too busy. I'm, I just need to prepare for heaven. Yes. Oh, yes. You have a right to tell him that. Because you have a right to choose your destiny. And on the matters of your destiny, there is no debate. 
Yes, there is no discussion on your destiny. That should not be discussed. That is your preserve, your choice. Oh, I was busy. I had a wedding. I was actually traveling in South Africa. So and so from America was coming. When they are crying that I take this message there. On a daily basis. And the Lord brought it to you here. Ah. <laughs> that I was not there when the announcement was being made. Hey. The Lord will say, uh-uh. I sent my servant. Yes. And uh, he, he came to tell you my, my word. And now you rejected him. Wow, and you're trying to come direct to me now. And you're telling me that, Lord, you know, help me because, you know, when that announcement was made, I didn't restore. And he has come to assert to you that let us go back to the cross. What a beautiful message. <laughs> huh? I like the way sometimes the Lord acts. He says, no, 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 no. Go back to him. That man is my prophet. I'll pray for you. <laughs> yes. I like the way the Lord behaves at times. He says, I am not mistaken to send a messenger. God is never mistaken. God is so busy that he's not idle. You understand? <laughs> Zambia. <laughs> and nations have grabbed this and big revival has exploded there. Meaning, this way is right. This is true. You were in Kenya, you saw the dressing. Ah, it has transformed them. Eh? This way is right. It is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read this. He says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. He says, Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel during their travel. That is the shorter version of Numbers 9, 15 to 23. Listen here. You see two Israel. The first Israel you see is very disobedient. They want large cucumbers, they want pots of meat, they want to go back to Egypt. Very rebellious. But when the cloud comes, something interesting happens. Something very powerful happens. In fact, I just want to read one more verse in Exodus 33. Then I'll put it together. When the cloud arrives. Exodus 33, you see what they do. Exodus 33, let me just read it here. When the cloud arrives. Look at this from verse 9. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of the cloud, the same cloud I'm talking about, this same cloud. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of the cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Verse 10 is good. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped at the entrance of the tent. Whenever the cloud came, they stood with their children at the doors of their tents and worshipped. Worshipped. Ah. You see two different Israel. Before the cloud came, disobedient, rebellious, you hear the chorus of this world talking. No, I'm also a prophet in Zambia here. How dare you? If you're a prophet, why did you leave the nation go into sin? If the same God speaking with me speaks with you. Because the one speaking with me is the holy God. Then you should bring, where is your revival? Bring it. Why did you now? In fact, they are going to hold you responsible. 
for allowing them go on the wrong road for so long when you are actually the prophet of God here hey, and you didn't tell us they're going to hold you responsible <laughs> no more room for false prophets and Zambia is rich in false prophets woe unto you here before the cloud comes the chorus are claiming no isn't this a holy assembly of god hasn't god spoken with all here hey! was god mistaken to send moses god made a mistake or he was confused and then when the cloud comes then you see a different israel they even come out worship revival to worship him in reverence and trembling when they see the cloud and when the cloud settles they settle they do not attempt to disobey the cloud lifts they pack up and go with the cloud ah. and because they follow the cloud they became the people whose god is jehovah until today it became a lasting mark on their name because they followed the cloud the only nation that ever followed the cloud hey. Hey, hey. how awesome and in the process of the cloud coming even though he created all the earth israel he gave his holy statutes he gave them his holy laws. So of all the nationalities, the nations of the earth, Israel became the only nation who is the beholder of God's statutes, holy statutes. And in the process, when they read the statutes, inside was the plan for the salvation of mankind. And he walked with them. Could it be true that he has now come also to reaffirm his holy statutes that the church beholds? <laughs> because only in the Bible do you find the master plan for the salvation of man. It's not in the Hindu book. Or the Buddhist what? Could it be true that the Lord is saying that, look, you have been a disobedient Lord, accumulating for yourself false prophets, false apostles, and longing for another gospel of the flesh called the gospel of prosperity, the gospel that is so eating the flesh, it is sweet when you hear it. It tickles you, huh? Eh? It moves masses. They, they love it, right? Could it be true that the Lord is saying that now that that has happened, that level of disobedience, apostasy is disobedience. That now he has come and he demands obedience. Because for Israel when he came, you saw a different Israel. Obedient. How will the church enter her eternity without following him how how will for israel when they followed him he led them through the, they actually used the more difficult route through the red sea they wept they said, oh, oh oh for christ's sake we have children here don't do this and then he drowned their enemies how will the Lord drown your enemies if you don't follow him? You, you want to go through here. But the Lord said, no, 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 no. I want to go through here. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Hallelujah. Can I move on? So, what I've been covering until now says, the cloud of God has come 
to walk with the church. To walk with the church. The way he walked with Enoch until Enoch entered. That when you walk with the Lord, you will enter. He leads you to the glorious kingdom of his son that finished the beautiful work. The son already finished the beautiful work on the cross. He has only come to help you to realize the kingdom of the Messiah when it comes. If you love it in Zambia here, nice homes I see here, beautiful. I said like Oklahoma really. Nowhere else. They're absolutely awesome. Even the roads. But if you like it here and the food and the barbecue and the water and the chicken here, how much more is the kingdom of God? So what I do is essentially I come to disconnect you from the citizenship of Zambia. That's why I come. And I come to connect you to the citizenship of heaven. <laughs> I come to tell you, no, 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 there is another kingdom. A greater kingdom. Worth laboring for. Can we move on? Now I want to cover another very important aspect of his visitation. He comes to distinguish his people. So, so those of you who are writing and recording, this is very powerful. You don't get this anywhere. The others on TV are entertaining clients and making manathon, telethon, whatever. They call it telethon, manathon, whatever. It's a marathon for money. <laughs> they are busy. They never get enough. They are always collecting. And I was sharing with my son here yesterday. I was telling him, South Africa, Johannesburg. I used to sleep on the floor of the airport. And yet, I have not yet changed the message. It has gotten stronger, actually. On the floor, on the floor of the airport. Sometimes 24 hours waiting for the next flight to cross the ocean. With the keyboardist, what we're going for healing service. So there's a keyboardist. Mike on his one is there with his camera, always on the floor. Once we afforded one cock like this, with the uh, ground nuts, a small pack. Then we celebrated God. Because I said, wow, he has sent me and even provided a flight ticket. Without bending this word. And he could have sent me by putting me into a small boat for three months. And when you see the big waves like a 10-story building coming in front of you, you weep until all the tears in your stomach dry up. Because that wave will throw you up into heaven and then throw you back into hell, into a ditch, with troughs and whatever. You did not know that people in the seas are always weeping? And so, <laughs> no. And you take three months to take the message the other side. And he would still be God. He would not change. He would still be God. That suffering would not change him. And that's why I, I celebrated. I said, no. And he has provided even one cock with groundnuts. Ah, we celebrated. We sang him. We sang him. Huh? And we're holding onto our bags like this. Because there's an announcement going on. You lose it. This time you lose your bag. You must lose it this time. If you don't watch it, it's gone now. Yeah? You know Johannesburg, how they announce it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? So we were in that kind of situation, celebrating God. And then Sao Paulo also. Sao Paulo. Always sleeping. When you go downstairs, you always find me sleeping there with the team on the floor, dry floor. Now I understood when Jesus did not have a home. And he used to sleep on the rock on the Mount of Olives. And he did not change the message. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is time to sleep on the floor. <laughs> it is time to stand with the Lord. You are in palatial homes. You people are big homes. And so sometimes <laughs> you begin to think that that's how God calls. No. Sometimes God calls differently. When God calls you, sometimes it's different. 
Sometimes it's really different when the Lord has called you. And sometimes there is the calling of God. <laughs> and it's not a joke. Oh, yes. I'm only telling you the truth. You'll find it in the Bible then. So, the cloud of God, the Godhead, Jehovah, comes down himself to distinguish his people. I won't handle that now. Distinguish his people. Can we go to Exodus 33 and handle that if you don't mind? Hallelujah. Am I hurting you too much? Do you still love Jesus? I don't want, I don't want to ask, do you still love me? No, 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 no. I, because sometimes they say, no, now I don't think I do. <laughs> when you came, we loved you. Now I've heard you, I don't want. <laughs> you understand? The what? You know, you love the Lord. That's better. Love the Lord, not me. <laughs> Thank you so much. The urgency, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because if you knew what I know about the coming of the Lord, you would prepare quickly today. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Exodus 33 from verse 14. I need to find it. It's there. Can I move on now? Exodus 33. And this, other, this is under the topic. The cloud of God the Father comes to distinguish his people. Distinguish. To separate apart. So you, now, now his people will be different. Huh? Oh yes, he comes for a mission. Are you ready? Exodus 33 verse 14 I'm reading now. Verse 15 is better. But you can read whichever way. 14, 15. Uh, I'm reading. He says, verse 14, he says, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Verse 15, Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Verse 16, How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Focus on me now so I can give this. Because the, the message I'm giving today, I have not begun. It's deeper. It's there. Because I need to get the words of Jesus. What Jesus said about this mission. Hallelujah. Can, 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 can you follow me here? What is he saying? He's saying, Moses knew that the cloud has come. And now that he has visited us in this very tremendous way, and even released manna from heaven, and we have eaten from his own hands, bread from heaven. You know, those are not small things. That he comes himself, aye, and then relate with you, so, Moses knew that those visitations were historic. And so Moses said, moving forward, going forward from here on, he asked, how will those people, he knew that those people are stubborn, they would disturb us. If we tell them, they say, no, we don't believe. How will those people there, out there where we are going, know that the cloud, your own cloud, you have come down in your own cloud and dwelt among us. How will they know? Number two, how will they know we have eaten from your hands? Number three, how will they then know that you are pleased with me and with your people? Number four, what is it that will distinguish us from the rest of the People on the face of the earth. I don't know what Moses expected. Maybe to get a, an ID, because I see you with badges here. To get, say, okay, okay, take these badges and give everybody. Or take these t-shirts and print on the back. So people may know. When you just see you, see that, oh, you're the one. Oh, hallelujah, how are you? Whatever. Huh? <laughs> like the way you thank you, my son, you shake your head say, No, you don't work like that. <laughs> you see that? How will they know 
that the cloud of Jehovah, we know that this is a big thing. That the cloud of Jehovah may come down. That we know. We know it's historic. We know generations have come and died without seeing. But how now will the other people know that it is us? Because when the prophet saw us, some of them wept and said, I wish I could live to see that generation. Because I see him going to them to visit them. So I said, I don't know what Moses expected, an idea or what. Look at the answer of the Lord. Look at how the Lord answers. Do you remember when he approached the Godhead, the burning bush? Moses, Moses, don't come any closer. Don't come now. And first of all, remove those sandals. Aren't you aware you are standing on holy? This is now holy ground. This is the answer. Because the church is also asking, how will people know that we are that church that has been visited? Because he has, in, in one other very tremendous dream, he wrote for me across the sky, tabernacle, after this visitation. Meaning, tell them I am now resident. Oh yes. Oh yes. Tabernacle. All that I think is the web. I think all this. There's a lot of prophecies on the web, by the way. You can pursue them. And their fulfillment. The latest is this one, Nepal. And very earth shaking. They bring the earth on his knees. But now listen to this. Listen to this. When that visitation took place, and Moses tried to approach, he was told, remove your sandals, right? The place has now become holy ground. I don't care whether you were grazing here yesterday. But because today there is a visitation, this is now holy ground. So now listen to this. The Lord was saying the following to answer Moses. How will the, how, what will distinguish us? He was saying the following. He was saying that at the place of the visitation of the Godhead, at the place where God the Father himself visits, has chosen to visit, Number one, that becomes the place of visitation. Yeah, that is okay. Number one. Number two, that place becomes the beholder of divine presence. Those who are right, thank God. Number, four, number three, once it is the place of divine presence, look at this now. Then, he sanctifies that place. His presence alone sanctifies that place. And once that place has been sanctified, then he chooses now, he goes on and consecrates it now. And once he has consecrated that place, then you will see him now coming through boldly and saying, Behold, this is now holy ground. The next number, once he has declared it holy ground, then there are certain standards that appertain to that place now. Once he has declared it holy ground, the next number is this. Then the people caught up in that visitation. Okay, let me give you water that, that you may not miss on anything here. Can you pass water to my son there? Yes, it is him. Yes, I don't want anyone to do here. That would be a lie. Him, him here, 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 here. That is it. Thank you. Give it to him. Yes, that he may not lose this. This is very big. So, again I said that once he has declared that, behold, this is holy ground, then there are now certain requirements of that place. And I said, the people caught up in that visitation, found there, now, he requires of them certain things. But first of all, he calls them holy people. The people at the place of visitation become holy people. After that, when he declares them holy people, then he requires of them holy worship. Because now he is there. Where worship is the way you live your life before the Lord. Where worship is living, knowing that I'm now living in the sight of God. 
in the presence of God. After holy worship, if they observe that required holy worship, then you hear the Lord saying that, look, now, even though I created the whole earth and all the nations, for me, you shall be unto me a treasured possession. Treasured possession. And once you have continued the holy worship, and now he has made you his holy elect, meaning treasured possession, his elect. Then, at that point, look at what happens. The standard and the bar is now clear for those who live there. If you break it up to you now. Because, look at this now. He says, those who are called his holy elect, treasured possession. He says, even though I created the whole earth, for me you shall be unto me a treasured possession. That's what he told Israel when he came down. Unless they break it themselves. Now look at this now. From that point on, he wants you to understand the following. That now, you must be distinguishable, openly, vividly, distinguishable to the rest of the people on the earth. Look at this now. How? Because he's saying that God's treasured possession or treasured elect, because of this visitation, number one, their talk has changed. Number two, their walk has changed. Number three, their dressing has changed. Number four, their worship has changed. Number five, their praise has changed. Number six, their word has changed. Number seven, their mind has changed. Number eight, the thoughts of their hearts have changed. Number nine, their companions have changed. Number ten, their salvation has changed. Before that, their fasting has changed. They now fast like Jesus did. Dry fast now. Not this making of soup or whatever. <laughs> I'm, say, I'm in day 100 I'm now in the 100th day and uh, I'm still strong I, I really feel I'm strong <laughs> don't joke like that <laughs> that is something else their eating behavior has changed their drinking behavior has changed oh, no. you know Paul says a little wine for the stomach is good they don't say that even their drinking behavior has changed. You don't find them on Fridays with colleagues. We, you know, we, we are bankers or we are lawyers. We are just having a business meeting on a Friday evening. And a little wine here and there and beer here and there. No. And then he says, their salvation has hence changed. And if you look at them very carefully, you'll find... That their destiny has actually changed. They are walking in a different direction now. He says, when those things happen to you, when you manifest those things, then the people of this earth will know that that church has been visited. God has been there. Oh yes. You see now the girls have tied their hair. They have stopped buying the fake hair from India. You know, in India, they enter the temple and they say, now, I go to purify myself. I just enter here to purification. I go, and there's a big drum, and they go there to purification. They clean up the hair. They, they put in the drum. They come out wearing sheets and flat head. They say, purified. And then there is somebody that cleans the temple. I say it. Say, can I take care of your garbage? <laughs> a wise man. And he picks them and takes African women who do not like the way God created them. Who want to lie. I want to look like somebody else. I want to lie. I want to live a lie. And God is but where is the, the woman I created? Cannot see her anymore. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> when you see them, they don't wear fake hair anymore. Their scarves are long. Their sons have no sagging trousers. They are decent. They are the light of the nation. When you see them, they walk in righteousness. When you see them in that form, they are holy. When you see them, say, those people, God himself has visited them there. Oh, yes. When you see, you will know. You will just know. It's not something to carry as an ID. No. You just look at their lives. Look at their destiny. They are now headed to heaven. They don't care. They, be, they leave the other principles which say, walk with people. I, I, I teach these principles all over the world. Walk with people going in the same direction. <laughs> Learn to stand alone even in the church. Yeah? That is what happens there. When you look at them, you know. You just know. They are now carrying themselves with decorum. They begin to understand, wow, my body is the holy temple of the holy God. How can I defile my body? They walk with reverence. They don't live in the U.S. They call it basti. They don't live basti anymore. They are now reserved. They are more careful. Please come. Can we go have a party? Can, can, can I think about it a bit? Because I had Bible study on Friday. Yes, so now they, they, they question everything. They ask of what? Because they have May, they, they believe in this principle that says maintain an eternal perspective in everything you do. They begin to question everything. Of what eternal value is this phone call, if I pick it? This man, I know he lasts at me. That's obvious. This man, I work together with him. I know he lasts, he lasts at me. But if I pick that phone, what is the eternal value? How does it build my eternity? They now question everything. When I go and study criminal law, and then somebody comes to me and says, I have killed, but I want you to go there and lie and say, I did not kill. I just say, I did not kill, but uh, actually I was not there. Yeah. So they even question the courses they take at university. If he's an accountant, you cannot force him to make books. He says, between you boss and Jesus, oh, that's, that's no brainer. I don't have to be a genius on that one. That's simple. I just choose Jesus. He says, I'd rather leave the job, but I will not bend the books. <laughs> oh, yes. They've and audit everything in their lives because they are looking at life through the prism of eternity. Because Moses asked, those people are difficult. How will they know really that you have been here, please? Huh? <laughs> huh? Then he said, no. No, 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 no. Don't worry about that question. If I have visited you, there are certain things that have happened here. Yes, if it didn't happen, that, in Swahili they say, Ioni shauriako. I mean, that, that's now up to you. If nothing, you didn't change when I visited. You have not changed. That's now yours. Yes. <laughs> Others have changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I move on? <laughs> uh, I need to begin the sermon for today. So, so I've not yet begun. Because today's sermon is very big. Yes, really true. I need Because there's so much I need to give, right? There's so much I need to give. I think let me just begin today's sermon. Let me go to the words of Jesus. Right? Yeah, let me begin. It's going to be quite uh, extensive though. The words of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let us begin this message today. The question is this. When the cloud of God that I tremble to every morning, even a mere thought that I gave the prophecy and he came, always trembles me so much every morning. Even mere thought that he can send me all over the world to talk about him like this, always makes me tremble every morning. But when I gave this prophecy and then he came and even wrote for me, tell them tabernacle, I'm now in the tent. You know? When he came, what is the message to the church? I know I've already given part of the message to the church, right? And some of you are like, enough now, I'm ready to enter. No, please. It's more now, this beginning now, right? 
You receive what Kenya received, so you may enjoy the same revival, right? Yes, because I belong to Zambia, I belong to Mexico, I belong to everybody. I don't belong to Kenya. You know that. Oh yes, I came from the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's why I could stay here, pitch tent, and do it from town to town until the entire nation explode into a big revival and enter, right? Free of charge. All I need is just water. Even in the streets I can sleep is not a problem. Sometimes you need to do that. That the Lord may say, hey, he is so radical about me. Yes. That's all is good. Hallelujah. But now, what is the message to the church in Zambia and those listening across the globe? Now listen to this now. That, year, that, that was December 31st, 2013. December 31st, 2012 and then January 1st, 2013. So that year of 2013, May 4th, Okay, once you sit down, I'll continue, my daughter. Sit down, that seat is yours. Just sit on it. Sit on it. Don't fear it. Thank you. Sit down, my daughter. And if you're an usher, now settle down. Do you need water? What do you need? I can give you water. Please, that's all right. Don't laugh. Thank you. Can I give you some water, my daughter? Thank you. In Kenya, when I give it like this, do you know what they do? They always take it home. And then if somebody is very sick, they give like this and stands up. If it was crippled, stand up and walk away. I, I, they are not aware who is walking here, right? I think there's a, <laughs> there's a situation, right? They're not aware, right? Oh. Sometimes you need to know. Oh, yes. In Kenya, they take it. And when you hear, the, 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 the boy that was crippled since birth for three years, the neck was weak, could not support the head, and the legs were, and then stood up and walked. Kenyans are listening to me now because we're alive. And, and walk like this. And walk away. So, my daughter, that is it. I know I came di disguised, but it's good. Amen. Thank you so much. Now, that, I said December 31st, 2012, January 1 now, that's 2013, that year, May 4th, May 5th, May 7th, three days. He skipped May 6th. He again spoke to me about this cloud. And he told me, he is here. He showed me this cloud. He came to speak to me in a dream and he showed me this cloud. He said, he is here. He is here. Go, in other words, go tell them, I am here. But it's amazing to me that he showed me. It, it was as if there's a snowfall, snow. Even as the cloud has touched down, snow, like there's a snow. Pure white, unbelievably white, and snowfall all around wherever the glory touched, you know. And then the difference is that this time around I saw finally this cloud lift. Lift up like this. And I remember when I looked up like this, I saw people in their glory bodies. And they went up. Then I understood. I understood that he is saying, not only have I come to prepare the church for my one and only beloved son, the darling of heaven, the one and only begotten son, whom I gave away and was missing in heaven for some years. The seat was empty. Only to be abused down there. By the very own he went to deliver. They beat him up silly. Until he fell with the same cross. He was using to deliver you. Until when he looked at his car. He said oh those people must have really hated me. And if you read Psalm 22. It almost tells you that the Messiah died of a broken heart. I know the wounds were terrible. But it, it, they, it almost. It just talks about the condition of the heart. His heart just melt. If you looked at the level of hate, no, give us Baranabas, the thug. This guy finish him. So, so those things broke his heart very much. And the level of beat, physical beatings, 
that you cannot stand. Nobody has ever been, ever been killed like that. But anyhow, not only has he seen that, wow, I need to run there and help the church. Otherwise, they will humiliate my son. So not only has he come to help the church prepare, but also to take the church like Isaiah saw. That when that day arrives, he is your enabling power. What does that tell you? In this coming of the Messiah, in, in, yeah, the coming of the Messiah or the lifting of the church, I bless you very much here. This is the first church I've seen. They put sweets here, right? <laughs> Dulceria, dulce in Spanish. Eh? <laughs> Man. So th that's very good because it's, but don't be used to sweets. <laughs> I've just seen sweets here and then uh, it interrupted me. <laughs> they used a sweet message to add on it, you suck something sweet. <laughs> Does that speak about our condition? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can, can I just continue here, please? Don't interrupt me with your sweetness. <laughs> He's saying, Isaiah saw, I've already handled that part, Isaiah 26, how his coming is to enable the church. The enabling of the church is to expose sin, is to announce holiness, and all that. But listen to this now. Key in the visitation of the Godhead that Moses had is when he told Moses to go tell the house of Jacob go back to Egypt and tell them their cry has reached me and if their cry has reached me I have made a deliberate decision I have decided that I'm coming to deliver them and if I come to deliver them that deliverance will take place at the midnight hour. And if that deliverance takes place at the midnight hour, there are certain protocols. There is a protocol on how to prepare to receive the midnight hour. So you see really that that encounter was more of announcing the midnight hour to them. And then he gave out to prepare. Get a lamb without defect. Get the blood of the perfect lamb without defect. And then he says, get bitter herbs. Get bread without yeast and all that. There's all that protocol there in the Bible. I'm taking you somewhere. That's why I'm jumping it. I'm rushing through it a little bit. We will come back to it later. But I'm saying it was more of an announcement that look, the tell them deliverance has come and it's at the midnight hour. That's why I prepare for it. Now, the church today also finds herself waiting for the midnight hour. Because the Messiah comes at the midnight hour. That's what we're waiting for. The midnight hour. And so there's so much instruction in the Bible regarding the midnight hour that the church, that ministers to the church, preaches the gospel to the church. And by seeing the cloud lift with people in their glorious bodies, meaning, wow, so he is coming it's about the midnight hour. Because that happens at the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Step by step. So now, I will later come to the midnight hour, even as encountered in Egypt. But I first want to focus on what Jesus said about the midnight hour. Because if he comes at the midnight hour, there is something the Lord said about the midnight hour and even the fraction that is taken. <laughs> the small, well, I don't want to use the word small. The people, because I have to be generous on this. The fraction that I saw going. There is an instruction in the Bible about that fraction. Now I understand that his coming is relating to that group he takes. In fact, he has come for them. 
I know we've covered here and there since I began yesterday on that fraction. Even today we talked about my people, right? Can we now step by step go and understand what exactly is he saying to the church now about that event he has come to prepare for, right? Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Matthew 25. That's where we're going to. The midnight hour. What is the glory of God saying about the midnight hour? He says, Matthew 25 from verse 1 to 13, he says, At that time the kingdom of heaven. Now that is the Lord Jesus talking about that midnight hour and the fraction that will be taken up. So this is now very key, but pay attention to the things that are going to transact here. Right? He says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Wow. And then he, go, he goes on to say, however, the wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was long time in coming, meaning delayed. Did you understand? Long time in coming, and they all became all, all, wise and foolish, became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones say to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going off. Number nine. No, they replied, there is not enough for both us and you. Instead, you go to those who sell and buy, sell oil and buy some for yourselves. In fact, you can almost understand there before I even start talking about this thing. You can understand there that, you see, they come to us, they are not given, but then the wise now send the wise are the ones who send away the foolish. You, 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 you noted that, right? It is the wise who actually send them away. And when they send them away, look at what happens. When they send them away, then you hear. At midnight, the cry, okay, 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 the cry rang out and the bridegroom came. The, 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 rather, sorry. The cry rang out. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones say to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. Verse 9, he says, no, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, you go to those who sell and buy some for yourself. Send them away. Verse 10 now, while they were on their way, look at what happens. While the wise ones have sent the foolish ones away, then you see what happens, verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were already went in with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. The Isaiah shutting of the door happens again here. After they have entered, right? Can we move on now? Later, the others also came. Sir, sir. In the other versions, they say, Lord, Lord. Sir, sir. They said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Then verse 13, he says, Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. That is where I want to begin to launch the message that the cloud is saying. If I have seen the cloud take people in their glorious bodies, then I know, wow, Isaiah was right. He comes for the midnight hour. And for me, I'm happy because I can almost see that he say, I, I can almost hear him saying, let me run there, otherwise they will humiliate my son again. Let me go there and institute some reforms. We thank God for that preparing of the way, right? And remembering the church anyway. Now, I want to launch from here. If he came for the midnight hour, to prepare for the midnight hour thereof, to prepare the church, that when the midnight hour strikes, the church be ready. Then in other words, Jesus who already told us which church he takes at the midnight hour. He is coming to affirm to us the words of Jesus. He can never point in anywhere else except to his son. 
<laughs> face to face today with the Lord, right? Oh, yes. This moment had for right. He's coming to establish in you that, look, pay attention to what my son has said. Because I don't come to anything else but to take the ones he talked about. But let me go back step by step and walk you through this. You hear him talk about the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't say the kingdom of God, right? Now I'm going through what Jesus said that we may understand whom the Lord has come to take. To prepare and take, right? Hallelujah. But in there, you hear him saying, the kingdom of heaven, he doesn't say the kingdom of God. He said, is like ten virgins who went out, five foolish, no oil, five wise. But I just want to first begin right there that you don't miss anything else. He's saying the kingdom of heaven, implying the kingdom of God. So the first thing that Jesus told us that he has come to affirm is that for your own information, the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God. In other words, all the heavens belong to our God. The sovereignty and the might of our God. That's one of the first things Jesus gave us. So if anybody ever dream about going to heaven, then please you have to obey our God. Because all the heavens, just, just, just a quick nugget, I want to help the church there. That I, may, I can rush to the point, but I don't want you to miss that. He's telling the child, look, look, look. If you ever want to go to heaven, the entire heavens belong to our God. The sovereignty of our God. So the first thing that comes out in the words of Jesus that he has come to affirm is that all the heavens belong to our God. So you must observe godliness. <laughs> Even to, is he going to come today? <laughs> oh no, it was you. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't mean to distort that so <laughs> hallelujah and the next thing he says there if he has come to affirm the words of jesus about the midnight hour the next thing he says there is that at this time right before the coming of the messiah he wants you to know that there will be two congregations in the church one church two congregations he says, one congregation constitutes the foolish virgins. And the other congregation constitutes the wise church, the wise virgins. And he says, the wise enter. Right away, I can just summarize that. The wise enter. And the only thing that makes them enter is the jar of oil. That's a quick snapshot I'm doing here. However, everybody focusing on me now because of what I'm about to say. However, what Jesus said about the midnight hour that the Father has come to affirm is this. He says that when the midnight hour arrives, the hour we so much wait for, he says, look, there will be the advantaged. The people who are advantaged. They, they are at an advantage. And the disadvantaged. In other words, those with plenty and those in depravity. In other words, those who are advantaged with surplus and those in destitution. That's what he's talking about there. But I never ceased to be amazed that the Lord Jesus said the following about the midnight hour. Oh, I'm so happy now. I've entered the message of Jesus. <laughs> this is it now. He's saying the Lord Jesus said he, he, he's the one that preached so much about love to the extent that his own name is love. That for God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten love to die for you. His own name is love.
Jesus, who preached so much about love, who preached so much about grace, who preached so much about knock, and it shall be opened. Ask, it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. The Jesus who preached so much about that. Zambia, listen to me. When it comes to the day of entry into the eternal kingdom of God, Jesus says that the destituted, the disadvantaged, go to the advantage and ask and if not given. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. That's why I came. Oh yes. Yes. That the truth may now come out fully. That the lines be drawn. So we choose which road we're following now. Oh yes. That's why I came. He's saying that on that day however they will knock and it shall not be opened. Ah. They will seek him and not find him. They will go to beg, please help us, our oil, just a little bit. To the same Jesus that preached sharing. If they ask you, please give, share with them. Love them also like you love you. Eh? Ah! The same Jesus. Now on that day, when it appertains to entry into the eternal kingdom of God, he says, the destituted, the disadvantaged, they ask and it's refused. Then he says, instead, you go to those who sell and buy some for yourselves. The wise now send them away. And when they send away like this, the Messiah arrives. What is the message there? Which message has the Father come to affirm there? Huh? Which message has the Father come to affirm there? On the words of Jesus. Don't worry, don't worry. Sit down. You sit down and write. <laughs> you don't stop. Stop asking many questions. You just enter. Leave these things here. Hey. <laughs> don't worry about them. You just prepare and enter. Hey. <laughs> don't worry about these things. Hey. <laughs> you just be writing yours. Hallelujah. He's saying, he's saying the following. He's saying that on that day, those who lack will ask and it will not be given. What is the message? The message is this. In that way, you hear that what Jesus said about the midnight hour is this. It is like he's saying all people have been given enough time to prepare. And that being found unprepared will not be excusable. That's number one. Number two. It is as though Jesus is saying the church of Christ in Zambia, what is wrong with you? Church of Christ in Zambia, what is your problem? This salvation I see you living. Who gave it to you? This salvation of compromise. I see you executing in the church. Where did you get it from? It is as though Jesus is saying. That that one is not my gospel. <laughs> oh yes. Today the truth has come here. Huh? He's saying, no. The salvation I brought on the cross is not that one. Because he's saying, after all, the gospel I brought and the salvation I brought is not that much inclusive. <laughs> oh, yes now. I think now finally we hit the rock, right? <laughs> oh, yes. It had to be said. After all, 
the salvation I brought on the cross and the blood is not that much inclusive the way you are doing it. It is for a select. Because one time they asked him, Lord, the way you are doing your ministry, this is difficult ministry. You speak to us plainly and you speak to them in parables. And they don't understand you. And he was going here, talk to five, talk to seven. Lord, this time that you have come, are only a few people going to be saved or what? The answer he gave them is what crushed their hearts. He said, you stop asking many questions. You just enter through the narrow door before <laughs> the answer is what killed them. You don't worry about, oh, my wife, my what, my who. You just enter. Go and enter. Quickly now, before it closes. <laughs> the other answer, I think in Matthew said, only to they that seek shall it be revealed. So the Lord is asking, this mixing of salvation between you believers and the non-believers here, who taught it to you? And in my own words, you can see, the Lord is saying, you can see that when the kingdom comes, only those who are ready go in. The others knock, they are thrown out. They are rejected. This is yet another rebuke to Zambia. To your very prophylactic gospel. You are, it's, it's, even the way you dress your short clothes or whatever, skirts or whatever it is. Eh? This is now the rebuke to you. He's asking, why have you mixed with the world? When I've made it very clear there that it mixes not with the world. <laughs> oh, I long to meet this church. I heard of, the Lord spoke to me quite a bit and I heard about Zambia so much. I, I, I long to encounter, to strike her, to meet her. Hmm? Oh yes. This mixing that you are doing with the world. Who taught it to you? He said, definitely not my gospel. Because my gospel is selective. It's only for those that choose righteousness. And the message from there, thereof, is that it is not for everybody saying, oh, you see, mix with who? Get this from the world, add it here, get that, add it there. Say, no, 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 no. Because the rest who are in the church, who do not pursue righteousness, without favor, fear, shut out. He shut out. <laughs> I long to come to you. Because you love so much American gospel and prosperity and everything, right? I longed really to do this today. I waited for so long. Oh, yes. To ask you that gospel of prosperity that you have mixed with the world. Who gave it to you? The Lord's gospel is separated. And he's saying, not everybody. Because on that day, they asked and it was denied. You would think, wow, is that the day when the Bible is exalting uh, selfishness? The answer is no. He's simply saying, on that day, there will be no excuse for anybody found not ready. He's only saying that his kingdom and his people's gospel, salvation, is not missable, mixable, blendable with the world. <laughs> that is the rebuke I brought. He said, no, let him come to prophesy good things to us. This is the good thing to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the good thing because he is now prophesying to you that there comes a day. When God, the Jesus who preached mercy, love, grace, peace, everything will have no mercy. Meaning, 
that a day comes when Jesus has to raise the bar and he has to strike down the road of justice when that day arrives. The same Jesus that loves you, that you love, when that day arrives, it, he has to tar like this down and out to tell you the truth. I know you not. Eh? And then, Step by step as we continue, precious people. Warning the church in Zambia that right away you can see he's saying you cannot mix. Right away he's saying that on that day the benchmark of holiness cannot be bent. The sooner you know it, the good or the better for you. Hallelujah. Oh yes. He will not lower the benchmark. And that's why Hebrews 12, 14 is so key to you. Very, very key. But if you look at this whole thing, can I expand it for you a little bit? Those who are writing, finish up so that I may expand it for you. If, if, you, if you look at the whole thing, look at this now. The Lord was involved in a very extended sermon, right? If you follow what happens in Matthew 25, he was actually talking about the end of the age. In fact, the final judgment. And then, all of a sudden, he interrupts it with this parable. And when he interrupts with the parable, listen to what he says. It's as though he's saying, if the, the, he's talking about final judgment and preparedness. Two things. And he's saying that there will be the general maturing of the earth towards the final day of judgment. The earth will gradually and slowly slide down. This earth that you love, you know the way Zambia is beautiful here in uh, this city of, uh, of uh, Lusaka? Of just nice homes, walls, what? You are driving between the leafy trees and all these good, beautiful roads. Eh? Powerful roads. These are top roads. And then, oh yes, I go all over the world so I can say that. And then, He's saying that you love it, you know, this weekend we are meeting so and so in his birthday for his son or daughter, whatever. You have this kind of thing going here. And then he's saying that this world, this Zambia that you so love, will one day come to an end. <laughs> that is another message he said about the midnight hour. If you hear what he's saying there, he's saying he was giving a someone about the end of the age when all the heavens will roll up, roll up, and the whole earth will be burnt with fire. The earth you so love. <laughs> and then he's saying, but in that slide down, if you prepare, you'll be saved from that. You, you, so, so you almost hear that Jesus. The words that the Father has come to affirm, the words of Jesus, you hear them saying that there will be judgment or reward, salvation. In other words, judgment or preparedness. Hallelujah. Listen to me very carefully here. When I gave the prophecy of the global economic crisis, I went all over the world. Talking about the release of the rider of the black horse. When he took me before the throne, the third creature came, spoke with me, get, went back, and I saw him release the black horse and all that. All that is in the web. I think it's all over. Until one day the markets crashed from New York all the way through Shanghai, uh, through, through New Europe to Shanghai. And, to, but the fulfillment was stunning, by the way. To see them crash. You understand? Oh, even me shocked me a little bit also. In fact, I became so interested. How did the cascade, because it kept domino effect, right? How did the cascade start? So I began to dig it deep how it happened to fulfill those words I had spoken. I became interested. Because they're all related to the coming of the Messiah. I gave the message on the release of the four apocalyptic horsemen. That's a whole different message, but I'm trying to pick a bit here to give it to you, that you may not miss it. You see that when that third horseman is released, look at what happens. 
you hear God the Father finally speaking from the throne. Giving him instruction that, hey, I see you going out with impunity, with fire, with ferociousness. But when you go there and you find a quart of wheat for a day's wages, in other words, you find people barely surviving in that. A quart of wheat for a day's wages. And by Hebrew definition, a quart of wheat is just enough wheat for one person to have a meal for one day. That's how I prophesied global famine coming. Did you understand? Apart from the economic crisis, I said famine. Of course, I know in that prophecy, I quote uh, Revelation chapter 6. You see? Verses 5 to 6. Hmm? But the issues are these. I said... Famine, you hear me talk about famine, but the thing is, a quart of wheat by Hebrew definition is just enough wheat for one person to eat for one day. And so I looked, I looked, and somebody just put the, put the cloud of God on. I, I looked at, uh, can you focus on me people if you don't mind? Yes. That day I looked around and I said, but what is the average size of a Hebrew family? If somebody, because a quart of wheat for a day's wages, if somebody is going to go to work and bring back out of his salary a quart of wheat, what then? What, what then is the, is the, 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 okay, there you go. No, let me just give him until he wakes. Thank you. <laughs> so if somebody is going to go to work and the earnings will be a quart of wheat, which means just enough for him, and then the average Hebrew family, let's say it's about 10 people, normally around 12.